Okay, so today we are going to show you guys a little bit about aluminum welding. Um, I know there's been a few comments on the Welder 101 on, you know, what, how to weld aluminum. How does it work? It's a whole kind of a different monster than steel. I mean, you know, you're working with a material that's way softer. The melting point is, is a lot quicker than steel. Um, I think aluminum melts at like 1400 degrees. So you don't need a bunch of heat like you do when you weld steel. Um, but it is kind of a weird thing to weld together. I don't know if, you know, if you've ever messed with it before. It is, it is kind of crazy and a lot of people are really scared of it, but it's really not that bad. Once you get your machine set up and you can actually um, go out in your shop and weld together, it's not that bad. I mean, here we got some test plates. I don't have anything like major to weld on to show you how it works in its element. But, um, you know, for instance, um, a lot of the welding that I did with an aluminum uh, welder MIG gun was a lot of the bull racks that guys would haul cattle in. So them 40 foot cattle trucks, there's usually two layers um, and they're, they're beat. They kick the doors off them, everything's cracked. The hinges get slammed and back and forth. So, and they're a mess, they're full of cow crap. You gotta clean them all out and get in there and make sure you weld, you know, your materials clean before you weld them. And a lot, this is a, this here is a, this is just an H and H and S welder that I'm using here. And it's just a push gun right out of the spool, out of the machine. Um, the lead on it's not really long, so don't get bound up. But if you're going to go 30 feet or 20 feet, you need a push pull system. And a lot of them are, um, there's either a, a little motor inside of here and there that pushes and pulls here. Okay. Or you have a spool gun on it and the spool gun runs. And that's a lot of the old school ones. That's how everybody used them. The aluminum welding is an AC current. Okay, you got AC and DC. You want an alternating current because what it does, it kind of pitter patters the metal and it cleans it as it goes. It kind of gets rid of the, the stuff. I mean, it's kind of complicated and I don't know everything about it, but I know that the AC is the, the setting that you want to weld aluminum. Not only that, but you want to run 100% argon through it. You don't want to run a mixed gas, run argon. Okay, it's the shielding gas that you need to weld aluminum. It is a little bit of a different monster. It's almost like feeling like you're welding backwards a little bit with, with aluminum because, you know, steel, you get so used to welding steel that it just, it's easy. But when you come up to aluminum, it's like it's got to be clean. You got to be set up right. There's a lot of preparation to get ready to weld aluminum. This machine has more capability than than I even know how to do, to be honest with you. So there's a lot of things that you can do with this. This thing pulses on aluminum, so it'll, it'll actually pulse weld and you can get your timing set up. So if you're doing a bunch of production and you got like a hundred pieces that you need to weld together, you'll turn this onto a setting that you set it up for and that it works and then you can do your production. And that's kind of what that's set up for. Pulse welding's cool. Um, with me, I weld so many different things that I don't use pulse because I could be welding something underneath this car over here. Somebody could bring a bus in here, a horse trailer, and I can work with it better the way that it is like this. But like I said, for production, pulse welding is really cool. Um, but I got a couple of plates here. I'm going to weld a couple of T-joints here. And then um, we'll weld these up really quick so I can kind of show you guys how it works. Okay, one thing about aluminum is, um, you want to make sure it's clean. I got this little stainless brush on here. Make sure your stainless brush is pretty clean too, because if it has any oil on it, it could contaminate your weld, especially with TIG welding. If you're going to practice, make sure you kind of clamp it down to the table, because remember aluminum doesn't really ground to the table very well. It's aluminum. So, you know, usually when you start a weld, this piece will actually ground itself to the table a little bit, so it won't move, but clamp it down so you can get a good, good pass on it. Make sure it's clean. I just rubbed my glove through there, so it's kind of probably dirty, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a weld in here real quick, see what it looks like. Let me do a little, little practice. Don't sound too bad. And you wanna push, you don't wanna pull. It's not a bad little pass. We could mess with the heat on that and get it better, but there's kind of a little, a little 
idea of how a MIG welder puts a weld in there. We're going to try a couple more really quick. I'm going to mess with the heat a little bit as we're going. Um, now remember, when you weld aluminum, there's a, there's a bunch of heat in that piece of aluminum right now. So if you had to back-to-back -back weld this, the next weld's going to fall into it so fast because it's, it's probably right up around that 1400 degree mark. So while it's hot, let's just do it anyway on the same setting and see if it changes and I'll show you the change. See that one flowed in there way, way better only because there was heat in it. So you can see that one, it really pushes in there when it's hot. So remember on a lot of this aluminum too, if you're welding something, you can preheat it a little bit and get a little heat in it before you weld it. Aluminum will just blob. If it's too hot, it'll just fall through. So you gotta keep moving with it. You can't, you can't mess around with aluminum. You can't sit there and go with it because it's hot and it's melting quick. And you'll see when you start up your machine, if you got like a multi-process machine where you can actually hook up a, a spool gun to it, go get you some tabs and start practicing because it's pretty fun. And once you learn how to do it, you know, and somebody comes in, you can actually charge a lot more for welding aluminum than you can steel. So keep that in mind. All right, let's weld a couple more real quick. So let's go ahead and weld the top of this really quick and see if we can get a weld to lay in there. You want to get upright on something like this. You don't want to be like this. You want to be up and down with a 10 degree pitch and weld her in there, okay? It's a lot faster than welding steel. You gotta move, you know what I mean? You can't be sitting there messing around. But there's a top weld right there of kind of a, of what it, you know, how you could put it together when you're come to a peak like that. You just wanna fill it in on one side and then we can go in here and we can weld the inside of this, okay? Let's just see if we can get a weld in there. See that one was, I should have waited for it to cool down. It got a little hot right here on the end, especially you can see where it blew it out. So keep an eye out for that right there. You want to end your puddle good, okay? You know what, I'm going to show you another spool gun while we're while we're sitting here, so I can show you guys the other one. Okay, I wanted to drag on a couple of other aluminum uh, wire feeds that I have laying around the shop. This one here is the, uh, this is the Lincoln. This is a great little machine, or a great little uh, wire feed for your Lincoln. And you can see inside of here, you can see the guts inside of here. It's got these little drive rollers right here. And it actually pulls the aluminum. So this is what they call the puller. The push, the pusher's in the machine, so it'll push and pull. But that way you can run, like if you look at this lead on here, this lead's probably 20 feet long, maybe longer. Okay, so I could drag this one all the way inside of something, or I can get a ways away. If you're working on a big semi-trailer that's aluminum, all these flatbed trailers you see going down the highway right now, they all crack. There's, there's money to be made welding aluminum trailers back together. These long ones like this are the ones that they use because they can, they don't have to drag their machine everywhere they're going. They can put it center of the trailer and pretty much hit both sides of it, okay? Because a lot, I've welded a ton of those flatbed trailers where they're all cracked and you know, they move down the road and that's part of the deal with aluminum is it just cracks. Um, you can always use this one too. So this one here is just basically a spool gun. You put your spool inside of here and um, there's a there's a uh, aluminum spool that goes in here and it pulls it through okay this just powers up off the machine right here okay so you get your gas and your power off of here you can see there's a plug on here so um, there's no wire going through it all the wire comes just through here so it's a it's a little bit clunkier but these are actually pretty nice little I mean these are great and these are the this is probably the one you're gonna start with if you guys got a welder in your shop, this is the one you're going to probably start with. When you jump to this level, you're going to get really expensive, okay? You got to be really doing some welding to justify it, you know what I mean? But for a guy that's in his shop, thinking around, 
Most of you guys will just get one of these and it's kind of fun to have, okay? So, you know, they all, they hooked everything. H&S, Lincoln's got them, Miller, Aesop, you know, they all have these kind of machine, uh, these kind of wire feeders for your uh, aluminum. So I just wanted to show you these really quick and how they work and the differences in them. And like I said, this one here is probably set up more for like semi trailers. If you're welding some trailers, you know, same with this one, you could do the same thing. This machine right here, just because of my lead distance, it's more for production. So if I'm doing production in my shop, this would be the one that I would use. If I'm doing a bunch of industrial stuff, working on semi trailers, bull racks, things like that, I would use this one or this one, okay? Um, so anyway, we're gonna move off to some TIG welding real quick. What I'm gonna do is show you guys how to tack weld a little bit of aluminum when you're TIGging. Show you guys a little something that I like to do. I got a couple of pennies here on the table. And these are copper, of course. And I like to kind of put a ball on the end of my tungsten. If you can see it right there, how sharp it is. I want to ball up the end of that just a little bit because it actually helps weld aluminum so much better. You can see the tungsten right there. It's got a little ball on it now, just a little bit. That's kind of where you want it to be when you're welding aluminum. <clears throat> um, okay, we're going to try to tack weld this really quick, this piece. And usually when you go to weld, if you're going to tack weld aluminum, get your heat set up. You practice some stuff out here on aluminum. And then when you go to hit this, you want to really give it a lot of throttle and push your puddle in there to get a good tack to start with. Because a lot of times if you just try to do a little bit, it just doesn't do it. You got to really kind of sometimes full throttle your pedal and get it started. You got to put a lot of heat in that right away. So let me see if we can get this one started. Now we can just kind of go across here and weld this in there really quick. And um, you know, these little, these little glass tips from Edge, they're, they're fragile, you gotta be careful with them. But if you're gonna be a beginner welder, what a great invention this is. Okay, so if you can see the differences, this little edge that I've been using, um, these guys sent me out these little Edge see-through glass. I love these especially if you're a beginner. Because if you look at this, all you can see is the tip. This, you can see everything. And on a blind side, like if on a blind side weld, you can't really see really good. This one here, you can see everything. So if you're gonna TIG weld and you're a beginner, I would use these. This is what I would use right here. These little edges, these are great. So try one of those out. <clears throat> As you can see, once you kind of get in time with it right here, see this right here, you can kind of get in time with the machine. So it'll get better as we go. I just, that was my first pass today. So we'll do try another one and see how it works. But yeah, you definitely want to get in time with the machine, okay? This one is set up on a pulse and you can either, it can, you can pulse it or you can run it all off your foot pedal. Either way, you got to run it off the foot pedal unless you run the trigger. And I've never been really good at that. So let me set up another one of these plates and then we'll do another one. TIG welding is pretty tough to get in a good location. Sometimes you got to, you know, elevate your arm or get it up where you can really get smooth. But we're just going to kind of wing it. And this thing gets hot. Aluminum will get hot. This thing is not water cooled, so it will get hot. The water cooled ones are really nice because they don't get as hot. Okay. But this is a big piece of aluminum, so it'll get hot as I go through. You'll see that tungsten really start getting it. We could probably do a few more and get some good practice in and make them look really good, which it comes down to timing. So realistically, if you can hear how that machine's pulsing, as it's pulsing, you can set up Mentally, you can time your, your puddles. But you gotta remember that 
things are changing as you're going. Even though you're in timing with that puddle, it's getting hotter as you go. So you got to remember, you got to compensate for that a little bit. And that'll come with just learning how to TIG weld and, you know, really trying to, to make it look as the best you can. But I like the pulse because I can time myself off of it. Okay. Sometimes I don't use it depending on if I'm using just regular steel and I'm welding something crazy together, I don't need it. But when you're doing aluminum, pulsing is really cool because you can time yourself and get your puddles right because your puddles are shown. Let's try one more of these babies. There you go, that's a little bit better. Okay, so TIG versus MIG. Uh, obviously TIG welding is just such a clean, clean weld. I mean, the finish on it's really nice. Um, the, ooh, that baby's still hot. The care in it is just so much better. It's just really kind of a real pretty weld. Um, you know, even on your, uh, even on your T-joints, or I mean, even on your uh, butt welding, you know, it looks good. I mean, TIG welding is definitely a lot better looking weld if you know how to TIG weld. MIG weld, I mean, it's just throwing it in there. You know what I mean? You're like, you're pushing wire, a lot of it, and you're moving. So you could see that this one's not as nice of a weld, MIG versus TIG. You know, there's some guys out there that can make a TIG uh, MIG welder look really good. Um, I could probably sit here and dink around with this machine for another hour or so and get it really nice, but I'm just going to kind of show you guys what I feel between TIG welding and MIG welding is if you have a big job that needs to be done, MIG weld it. You know, if it's a big hunk of aluminum that's on a flatbed trailer or whatever it is, MIG weld it. You know what I mean? Make sure that you're inside somewhere because you still got to run the argon unless you stick weld it or you torch weld it and we'll do that later but this is a this is all based on argon flow so you know but I, I love them both really I mean I've welded with both of them many times I mean and I I gotta tell you that if I'm gonna do something really cool like a fuel tank I want to TIG weld it if you're gonna weld a fuel tank a new one out of some aluminum TIG weld it it'll look a lot better when it's done if you can get your puddles set up, set up right. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time.